say uh, self awareness and awareness around the surroundings is very important you have to see what is coming uh, the world is changing so drastically what we have now was a possibility in the 80s and 90s and we have seen a huge difference so you know for example evs they are coming up coming up with new technologies for lasting battery life so we are asking for engineers who can contribute to how to design a battery that lasts long so, so i have seen a lot of demand for electrical engineers in power industry and especially if you have bit or pe you are like you know one of the best candidates out there so i recommend uh, if you are getting into power industry make sure your basics are clear Yeah, so that academic excellence uh, kind of helps to, you know, it puts you uh, in a competition and if you have the right friends around you, then you, you can definitely excel at it. Hi Chaitanya. Hello Wasim. How are you? I'm doing good, good. Thanks for having me. So Chaitanya, thanks a lot for taking time out of your schedule to do this interview. You have previously been on my YouTube channel. You took the electrical exam with me, the power exam with me. But that's not what we're going to be talking about today. So you are a professional engineer now in the state of Texas in US. And um, this series of podcast is geared towards learning what electrical engineers specifically those who are practicing engineers, those are who are PEs, do in their day-to-day -day life, you know, what your journey has been, um, starting out with your uh, early academics, uh, maybe going back even as early as your high school and then your undergraduate. I believe you also did your master's, correct? Yes. Uh, yeah, so you did your master's as well and then working in the industry. So let's start from your high school uh, as a as a high school student where you always gravitated towards engineering i know that in the indian culture there are only few professions that that are really held in high esteem right you can be a doctor you can be an engineer or maybe one or two other combinations was that the case with you or was the story a little bit different no it was more or less like that uh, so i grew up in india and uh, the time i grew up in you know they still were considering engineering or medical to be one of the top fields and uh, our teachers were also geared towards that you know they would pick students that are good in academics and they will drive them towards uh, engineering or medical uh, medical category and i had really good students uh, sorry teachers that were teaching good physics for us and that kind of gravitated me towards engineering in general and out of that, physics was appealing to me. So once I graduated my high school, I started applying to different engineering schools and I got into electrical engineering. So that was my first brush with electrical engineering. Right. And then having essentially, if I understand correctly, good teachers helped you understand math and physics better and math and physics led you to electrical engineering and made the choice a little bit easier for you, right? Right, yes. So math were prime subjects that my teachers were teaching us and they were really good at it. So their interest in that subject grew our interest in that subject, leading us to like Right. And that's the importance of having good mentors, good teachers early on in your career. That can really be a game changer. So moving forward into your undergraduate um, bachelor's of engineering days, how was your experience learning electrical engineering? So bachelor's, again, I did my bachelor's in India. So I'm internationally trained engineer. Um, and we had a lot of different courses throughout bachelor's. It was motors, it was power generation, distribution, uh, power factor correction, instrumentation and measurement. So we had a lot of variety of subjects to go through. And I personally liked motors and distribution particularly interest uh, so we used to have like four years of engineering college each year had two semesters and it, each sub each semester had about eight subjects so we studied a lot of different electrical engineering fields and <clears throat> once that was done we were at a level we could know a lot of different aspects of engineering and what we should focus on in masters so 
you know, four years of engineering gave us a lot of variety, a broad knowledge of various electrical engineering aspects. <clears throat> Any tips that you can share with folks who are still doing their undergraduate, uh, having the advantage of being in the future now, having several years of actual experience under your belt, what can somebody who is going through undergraduate engineering right now can do or can focus on to make the transition into the real work life or even into the graduate school masters, you did masters as well, a little bit easier? So first I would say uh, basics are very important. You know, voltage in India is same voltage in US or Canada, right? So you have to have your basics absolutely clear. Uh, then attention to detail is another thing that I would say uh, gets a long way. Uh, these two things coupled together with common sense engineering would get us into a right place of what an electrical engineer would do and how he can contribute to the society to make the life better of us. Right. I know in uh, I know in India, because I have a lot of students from, from the subcontinent from India, um, there is also a sense of academic excellence. Like, I, I think because there's so much competition at every st stage of the game, right, getting and uh, admissions into good quality engineering schools, getting into grad schools, you know, aiming for those coveted uh, job opportunities. Um, having a sense of competitiveness, do you think that is important or you can be a good engineer by staying in your own silo and just focusing on yourself? Uh, what is your What is your thought on that? Because I think in India, there's also that uh, concept of rankings, right? Like um, he's a class topper and then number two and number three. And whereas in most of the North American universities, you really don't even get to know what are the, yes. uh, what anybody else is scoring on different exams because it's confidentiality, privacy and all that. Whereas in India, I think it's more of a open competitive type of a setup. In fact, the results are published, I think, at different levels in grade 10, grade 12 publicly, right? Yes, that is right. Uh, you get to see who has talked and who hasn't. As a matter of fact, I was fifth in my university. So that's a public knowledge. So when I graduated, my it's really impressive. Yeah. Yeah, I talked uh, among first fifth. Uh, and it is public knowledge that, you know, you can go and check online uh, ask university people and they will display that information. It's not right. like in UK that only a student knows what he made. Um, so yeah, so that academic excellence uh, kind of helps too. You know, it puts you uh, in a competition and if you have the right friends around you, then you, you can definitely excel at it. Here though, in US, I have also come across engineers that were not good at studies, but they are excellent engineers. Like when the application comes into their field, applying the knowledge to the work they do, they are absolutely great. So it goes both ways, uh, but having that academic excellence definitely helps. You know, once you right. know how theory works, it is easier for you to understand how application would work. Right, that's good. So what prompted you to go for uh, graduate school? Did you work in the industry for a little bit uh, in between or you went for master's right away? So I worked at a, a company, Larson & Tubro. I was design engineer there. Uh, I was into switch gears. So I was designing power control centers and motor control centers uh, for about two years. And after that, I decided to focus on the graduate study just to see how international study would look like and how, what exposure I can get internationally. So I worked for two years in design field and I decided to pursue my graduate here in U.S. So that's when I came to U.S. Okay. And uh, you did your master's in uh, power systems, is that right? So I did master's in electrical engineering with focus on power system and control system. Okay, so having that work experience in between your undergraduate and graduate studies, did it help you appreciate the theoretical aspects of academics a little bit much better? It did, definitely. So, you know, when you're a student, you're not really working on a product per se, but if you're working professional, you're actually looking at a product uh, that is driving this industry. So learning about switch gears, motor control centers, bus bar support, sizing of bus bar, all of that helped me to understand how to apply that knowledge when I was doing the graduate studies. We did some fault calculations, short circuit analysis. In graduate studies, 
and when I was doing my work in India, I was actually doing testing, like physical testing on those. And I was able to correlate both those things. Yeah, I have seen that. You know, that's how this theory works, that kind of stuff. Right. And um, in my case as well, I was doing graduate studies on part-time basis while working full-time. And uh, that sparks interest. That makes things that you are doing a little bit more relevant, right? Correct. And you are able to appreciate things from the practical standpoint. And it also tells you that, you know, the time and effort that you're spending is not just some abstract concept. It has some practical application. Right. And I think with that, when those things click, uh, your internal motivation and desire to learn the concepts even deeply and better, it, it uh, increases. So that's the intrinsic motivation. So you came to the U.S., you were doing graduate studies, but you were doing them full time, right? At that stage, you were not working. Right. I was doing a part time job as a physics and math tutor, but international students are not allowed to work full time while studying. Right, right. So you completed your graduate studies and then uh, you re-entered the job market, right? That's right. So that's when I started with this company, uh, Intertech. And I wasn't obviously EIT or PE when I started with this company. But, you know, uh, I was brought uh, up to EIT and PE by my managers. And then I stumbled upon your courses where I started to get into EIT and PE. Right. So your journey of FE exam preparation started, you know, we've had uh, that interview, so I don't think we need to go into that in detail. Long story short, you passed both exams uh, back to back in a relatively short period of time. Uh, you got your EID certificate first, and then you basically become a licensed PE. And now you're a licensed professional engineer in the state of uh, Texas. Now, coming back to your um, day-to-day -day responsibilities as an electrical engineer. So we've talked about being good at maths, being good at physics in high school helps. In undergraduate studies, you were, you know, top amongst top five graduating students of your class, which is a big deal, right? Um, and uh, you took a lot of coursework geared towards power systems. Then you worked for a little bit in the industry, hands-on, and then you did your graduate studies and then you basically have been working at this place since you graduated and you continued growing the anvil, you know, pushing the envelope in the sense of your knowledge base, right? So you had done your master's, you didn't stay still, you pursued FE, you got the EIT, you got the P license. In fact, you're also a PNG in Canada, right? right. Um, and I do remember that once you had taken the P exam, I think that was last, um, you know, was it last year or the year, be year before? that you also started pursuing some credentials in the safety industry, right? Right. Um, so there's a continuous growth mindset that I can see. And it was great having you as a student, Chaitanya. You were always very focused um, in terms of uh, even challenging me on certain problems and questions. Hey, Vaseem, what, do you think that it should be like this? Or is this what you meant? Or is this what you meant? So I could clearly see that um, the drive and the thirst for knowledge and continuous improvement how can someone who wants to excel in their career now outside of academics in the day-to-day -day setup the capacity that you're working in how can someone cal cultivate these personality traits i know a lot of this is just maybe that's how you are in terms of always being very detail oriented very meticulous and whatnot but these are the key skills that good engineers have so what would be your tips uh, recommendations as to improving this particular aspect of their professional lives? Say uh, self-awareness and awareness around the surroundings is very important. You have to see what is coming. Uh, the world is changing so drastically. What we have now wasn't a possibility in 80s and 90s and we have seen a huge difference. So if you don't keep up to yourself with the new technologies then you will be left out. So that's basically what drives me that I'm interested in knowing what is coming on the edge. Uh, so the, which is why I did EIT after my master's then PE in state of Texas, then state of California also I have PE now. And then I did change for Canada. Uh, and I also have some functional safety related certifications. So if you guys are in this field, then you would know that functional safety is very, very promising field. Robotics is part of it. 
so you have to be aware of what is going to drive this world you know with ev stations coming up uh, renewable energy coming up these are the biggest trends that are going to change our industry solar is one of those things so if you have interest in contributing to the society look for what is coming up on the horizon and whatever is around it try to learn it so that's what i did basically and that is my advice to other folks also right and just just for record you know i want to make sure that people understand that uh folks like chitanya are not someone that are just solely focused and obsessed with just academics or technical details like you are a father as well right uh you have you like to do things outside of work as well right so it's just that so much of our time is taken up by work and what i try and tell my students in my programs in my courses and you know as a coach as a mentor or whatever you want to call it is that if one third of your day awake is going to be spent or consumed by your profession right might as well have fun and grow in that space as well rather than being mediocre or just you know carrying on or sleepwalking through it because when you take ownership and sit in the driving seat right um with full control or as much as control that you can assert it will basically make the journey a lot more fun correct right. and it gives you sense of confidence sense of achievement all of these mini milestones that you've been accumulating right inherently it makes you feel good right which is something that is very real right people around you recognize you as an expert and so this is something that i think you and i agree and i think most of the experts also who i read some books here and there on motivation they're like you need to have some mini successes along the way for you to become motivated and then become confident and then it snowballs into you taking on bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger projects right until you look back 10 years later and then you're like oh this is where i started from and look what i've become that type of stuff right so you hinted on the um, you hinted on the um, uh, you know professional side of things as an electrical engineer you pointed out that there are, these are big things that are happening renewable you know even energy storage systems and evs they are big game changers how is it positively impacting electrical engineers in the job market as a practicing engineer can you give us some examples sure. so you know for example evs they are coming up coming up with new technologies for lasting battery life so we are asking for engineers who can contribute to how to design a battery that lasts long that and these are new skills good. yeah yeah these are new skills uh, we are working on getting cars that run on hydrogen uh, for these zero emissions right so now hydrogen itself is explosive so we have to find ways around making it safe so these are again new technologies and challenges we have to come across hydrogen again compared to gasoline has uh, a lot of energy in it uh, in terms of mass but not in terms of volume so we have to come across techniques to make sure hydrogen is just as effective as gasoline yeah. yeah and it is renewable and you know how do you get hydrogen it's basically mainly from water so what techniques we can use to separate hydrogen and oxygen in the water to produce hydrogen so these right. are challenges that we are looking for and electrical engineers would be best fit to tackle these challenges right and a little bit on the you know because if somebody is thinking about choosing electrical engineering or more specifically power systems can you comment a little bit on the job market like how much demand there is for electrical engineers who have some skill sets credentials academics sure so i have seen a lot of demand for electrical engineers in power industry and especially if you have eit or pe you are like you know one of the best candidates out there so i recommend uh, if you are getting into power industry make sure your basics are clear and get eit and pe asap that yeah, it can be a game changer out. for sure it, it can right. be one thing apart from others Exactly. All right. Thanks a lot for uh, your time, Chitanya. It was nice, interesting, uh, brief, but I think hopefully very helpful conversation uh, that can um, you know give folks an idea of what to expect when they decide electrical engineering as a career. What are the things that you can do right uh, or improve upon to significantly boost your um, career. within within this particular discipline within this chosen field and i wish you best of luck and it's always good to chat with you thank you thank you thank you for having me have a good day yeah
If you like this video, then please don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Feel free to ask me any questions in the comment section of this video below. You can find tons of success stories of my FE Electrical and P Power students over here. And if you want to learn more about preparation of FE Electrical and Computer Exam and the P Power Exam, then check out these playlists over here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon in the next video.